Good morning, folks. Today we've got space weather, important news articles, upcoming events, and the Mars report at the end with Dr. August Dunning. We begin over at spaceweathernews.com and see that the last day on our star had little going on in the Earth-facing position. Little filaments snapped on the northeastern limb, but that's about it. You can see it better in 304 angstroms. Tiny. Solar flaring remains low, even the small sea flares are becoming less numerous. The solar wind is still riding in above average range, but with little variability thus far. We're still expecting streams to cause magnetic instability this week, but we're already seeing shield failures allow plasma to bombard the upper atmosphere here. As we mentioned yesterday, the watch score for quakes continue to rise. Sunspot score went up, spiking a bit and could go higher if that new grouping develops today right in the middle of the Earth-facing disk. We're also seeing the coronal hole score go up even higher, but a plateau is definitively coming about. The coronal hole on the north is massive, directly facing Earth, and the trailing edge of it is right there about to cross center disk. Thus far, the bigger quakes have been shy, but not the volcanoes. Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia with a mountain letting out a roar. Speaking of quakes, experts say Nepal is seeing a buildup of stress after little slippage has occurred following last year's deadly quake. Let's pray they're not due for a repeat event. Terrific article here about one of those super cool brown dwarfs, newly discovered and apparently it has solar flares that are bigger than the sun's. Lastly on the article front, we find a study linking underground salt water and the resulting conductivity to earthquake patterns, a nice little nod to the electromagnetic aspect of seismicity. In terms of weather, we have a hail event that hit Salt Lake City that was a top 15 hail event for that region of all time. The watches in the United States and far east and western Canada will jump back up this evening as a couple lows deliver their moisture and storms to the area. Eyes on your local forecasts. Folks, this weekend is the Thunderbolts Conference. EU 2016, Elegant Simplicity. I speak Saturday morning and you can find all the details for the weekend's events, including information about how to live stream if you can't make it out to Arizona. Thunderbolts.info. And right after this weekend's conference, we will begin offering the opportunity to register for the next Observing the Frontier event coming next spring. We're going to give first crack at the tickets to website members of suspiciousobservers.org, one of the perks of membership coming next week. We've got the Mars report coming right up here after pressure and radar forecasts and shots of our star to close. It's 3.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Last week on Mars, things were pretty calm. Different degrees of dust raising activities were observed to the northern and southern hemispheres of Mars this past week. At Southern Highlands, short lived local scale dust storms were spotted over Cyrenum, Noches, and Camaria. Ground frost to the south of these dust storms, composed of carbon dioxide ice, was part of the seasonal south polar edge that extended to 52 degrees south latitude for the northern lowlands. Conditions were relatively uneventful in the beginning of the week with transient dust storms over Acidalia 
and Arcadia. By midweek, dust lifting near the edge of the polar <clears throat> ice cap extended and became regional in scale over Acidalia and Arcadia. Across the mid to low latitudes of the red planet, afternoon wider ice clouds were observed over the slopes of Elysium, Tharsis, and the plateaus near Valmaneras. Northern Noches and the eastern Amazonas encountered some small dust storms. Skies above the robotic rovers, Curiosity and Gale Crater, and Opportunity and Endeavor Crater were storm free all week. Because there were no significant weather events to report, I'm leaving you with just the geosynchronous orbit view <laughs> of Mars as you would be uh, approaching the planet from the Earth transit.